Hey everyone, today I'll be making a really quick video uh, because I got a request from someone on YouTube on how I make this clown's crate. Uh, I inspired the crate from a video which I will link in the description. Uh, but for today I will show you the ins and the outs of how I made uh, my cheap version in, in my own garage uh, and tell you a bit about uh, how I did with the budget and uh, what problems happened and stuff. So first of all, I'll quickly demonstrate it for the people who haven't seen the previous video or video I'll link in the description. It's a crate I use in the haunted house uh, in a clown's costume clearly and once opened. There's a little jump scare for surprise. So um, yeah, I will make an uh, uncut video because I don't have that much time to be honest. And I'll just uh, show you show you around the crate. So uh, the crate itself, uh, as you would expect, it's just a wooden crate, uh, which I made from scrap wood. Uh, so I also got it for free from a construction site, uh, which already helped my budget, of course. As you can hear, see, uh, there's still some of the wood unpainted. Uh, and it's basically just a crate made of wooden plates and this... I put around, uh, well, just for the nice little 3D effect, I think it stands out a bit more. The paint job, uh, I also inspired from the video that I linked in the description. I uh, copied the color scheme with the red outlines, yellow background, and then the dark blue star. And I actually used a red spray paint can to just make some drops of blood on it from close by like this. It doesn't look that professional, uh, and I know it, but I think this really adds to the aesthetics. And also, um, one thing to really take into consideration while you're making this project is that whatever you're making, uh, people in a haunted house or anything will only see it from this side, and it will be dark around. So uh, I really didn't want to put too much effort in making really, really nice details, because it will be dark, and uh, it, it will work. <laughs> not t talking from experience it works so this is does the job basically uh, one thing I did differently than uh, the original video is I added this little <coughs> horn on top the horn I got from a dollar store and all you do is uh, drill a hole of course use some bolts so it doesn't slide up and down and I thought it would be a fun little extra to have on there but this of course is a free choice um, the crate itself, as you can see, it's screwed together on every side. Well, I think I don't have to explain exactly how to make a wooden crate. The inside, I will spend a lot of attention to, because this, of course, is where the magic happens. Um, I use these little door thingies. I forgot how you call them in English. Excuse me for that. You know what, uh, the turny thingies. I use one that goes all the way from the top to the bottom because I figured it would be a lot more stable but if you don't have this or you cannot get it I think you could also use uh, separate ones but I just figured this would be more stable and this little piece of wood as you can see slides over this side when it closes which makes it fit together even more nicely yeah, with the whole project I actually really try to stay on a budget and uh, well to make it like DIY proof it from my own garage so um, of course a lot of thinking went into how the heck I was gonna be able to actually move the head out and back in because that's clearly the whole point of the box right so what I did I will show you if I can manage to put my phone stable yes this will work Okay, good. I'll pull it out for you so you can see the system behind it. It's actually re relatively easy. Um, I got a lot of this plate metal, which was already uh, what, like a long stick of plate metal basically, and I cut it to the same length a couple times. Uh, one, two, three. So I did four, four crosses. I think you can do five uh, to extend it out a bit more. Um, to be honest, I didn't really do a lot of like trial and error thinking about it. I just went for it and it turned out to work. So I was satisfied. Anyway, uh, one thing that is really important is when you drill the holes, because of course you drill a hole on the top and the bottom, 
and one in the middle connect them all with some bolts and all stuff can move but with this part it is really important to work precisely because if you drill one hole a little off i think it would be really uh, really hard to move basically and then uh, the scissors of course uh, it's really understandable uh, and then on the front and on the back i actually did the same thing the top one as you can see here is connected with a hole uh, like the rest of them and then the bottom one i actually uh, cut out like a little well you, you cannot really call it a rails but kind of the same idea as a rail so it can move up and down freely because else of course it will get stuck um, and having this little rail I did the same on the back as you can see here it's able to move and the top will kind of stay in place so I'm not sure if I position my phone like this yes you can really clearly see oh now I move the whole box but yeah you can you really clearly see it moving it makes a lot of noise uh, you can hear the bolts moving around and everything but then again uh, if you're in a haunted house probably there's going to be music there's going to be screaming uh, so these are all the things that you notice uh, right now here on the table uh, but they don't really matter as you can hear it's pretty loud uh, but that's okay sometimes i tighten the bolts a little bit like this one it's right now a little untight and now it's good again um, so yeah, that's the whole making it move part. And then of course the big question, how do I how do I make it go out when I open the crate and how do I make it go back when you close the crate? And I'm getting a phone call at the same time, which I'll quickly deny. Okay, I'll call them back later. Um, to make it go out, I got a little ring on the right door and a little ring on the left door. And in between, there's just a rope, just a piece of rope, piece of string that goes behind through one of these. Uh, I wouldn't put it in the last one because then it's going to get stuck with the little rail. So I put it in the second one, uh, which I would also really recommend you to do. And because of this, clearly, uh, when the box is closed, there's no tension on the rope. It's just hanging here. The moment you open it all the way, there's going to be tension and these two ropes are going to be pulling out pulling out the head right now it's hard to show but once you're holding it and actually opening it it really works to just launch launch out the head of course uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve because uh, if you open one door a little faster than the other door it will kind of get stuck i will try if i can actually demonstrate this real quickly so you can get a better idea so here's the two doors with the rope in between and the moment I open one door like you see that the hat is going to get stuck so uh, to me it actually made the project even more fun that there's a little bit of a learning curve to using the crate afterwards and the point is to open both doors really uh, at the same time and then you can really launch out the head really nicely at some point you're really getting a feeling for how, like how far the head goes, how far you can stand away from people to, well, not hit them in the face, but like the right distance for a really nice jump scare, which is of course the uh, final goal. So then, after you launched out the face, the head, the clown's head in this case, um, the question is of course, how does it go back? Well, this also uh, sounds like a very, well, big puzzle but it turned out to be really really easy uh, all we did is put a spring from the final piece of metal to the front one and well put enough tension on it to pull it back what I did on purpose is uh, not connected this part of the string like I did on the back on the back I just connected it I just put it through there drilled a hole put it through closed it with a wrench and it's on place but on this place I actually use a tie wrap and put the spring through it like this. I did this because, um, well, during a night, like if you use it all weekend, uh, clearly it's not the most professional material. You can feel like maybe the head isn't going out as far or uh, it's too loose and it won't pull back nicely. 
um, and then you can well just twist the spring to tighten or loosen it a bit which is which makes it really convenient for on the spot like making minor adjustments same goes for the rope I just put the rope with a little knot on both sides because one time after using it the whole weekend uh, the busy string I was using at the time kind of started getting worn from sliding past this metal all the time uh, so always when I'm on the go right now I have a spare piece of string and I have a pair spare spring just in case I replaced the rope a couple times during the years the spring actually I never had to replace but still I always take it then that's that you know how the system works how it goes out and in really easy um, you will see that you don't have to do a lot of calculating and stuff just build it uh, you can ex copy my system exactly and on the go you will make minor adjustments to uh, how tight you have the spring and you will see that it works which is really nice it's really satisfying when a plan comes together right then on the back I welded this little part on the top and the bottom my camera doesn't focus right now I'll try to focus it first okay this is better I welded this on the back on the top and the bottom and with some bolts it's connected to the back of the crate you can see the bolts here I should have actually uh, which you see I replaced the bottom bolts I replaced them once which is why they're not painted actually I should have just left these out while painting but in the end it doesn't really make a difference and on the front you cannot see it of course because the head is here but on this front piece of metal I welded another piece of metal that goes straight to the front like pointing in this direction and uh, so I could slide the head on and make the head stay in its place and how I made the head was also really easy I got this mask this is literally just a clown's mask I wore it actually before before using the crate I got this from a discounter for like uh, 10 bucks I think uh, and again really on a budget but at night time it will do the job it will perfectly do the job this is a little uh, stiffed edit by my little nephews <laughs> which gave it a personal touch and actually a funny little detail is that the hair of this clown at first was a lot higher but uh, the hair kind of came through the top of the box so I had to give it a little haircut then uh, of course once you have a mask you cannot just put the mask on there because well it won't look that nice so what I did if I can get this to work yes don't mind the duct tape this is because it broke once and I didn't take the effort to fix it really nicely yet but what I did is just get a lot of this like construction foam you know the stuff that you would put in between walls made a big big ball of it big ball oh and then uh, once it's dried and set the next day I get a knife and just cut it cut it around uh, to make the shape of the head and then put the mask on and then uh, because you have this foam ball you can just like uh, slide it right on the metal if you have the metal rod going this way you can slide it right on uh, one time with me uh, I actually had a, a drunk guy in the haunted house who got so scared that he gave it a straight punch in the face the clown and then the clown head f flew off so I used duct tape to uh, fix it around and make it sit for the rest of the night back then and uh, well I haven't really fixed it ever since because right now I don't use it that much with COVID and everything um, but, but if you have no people walking around punching your clown in the face just the foam sliding on a metal uh, for me it always set there really well then on the inside at first it was all white just white and I thought it was a little boring so I got the spray paint which I used for these blood spatters and I just sprayed around and sprayed a lot of on top so it would drip down and then again you can really see that I didn't care about detailing and stuff at all because it's gonna be dark keep this in mind it's gonna be about the jump scare not about how nicely the crate looks in detail yeah, and I think this sums up uh, the whole system inside um, and for making it on a budget uh, it really works 
Oh, for me, I got the wood for free. The, the, the biggest cost within getting the mask, this was a dollar. And then I had to get this metal in the spring. That was actually the only thing that I really had to spend some money on was the uh, metal in the, the spring. Okay, maybe the rope if you don't have rope laying around. And then, of course, there's like the bolts. Uh, and in my case, the tie wrap I'm using. But this is stuff you have laying around in the house usually. Maybe the paint. Uh, I think I had the yellow uh, and the blue paint. And I had to get the red one, but I'm not quite sure. And then again, also the crate, you can of course paint any way you want. I just inspired my paint job from the one I saw in the other video, which I linked in the description. Um, so I just kind of copied it because I really liked this paint job. But clearly the one that uh, you can see in the in video that I linked is really, really, really professional. At least it looked really professional. Um, I think it has a different system behind it as well because uh, it moves a lot more smoothly as I can see from the video, at least my assumptions. If you, if you think differently, let me know, please, in comments. Um, but th this works. It works not perfectly. You, you gotta make like minor adjustments during the night if you're in a haunted house or anything, but it really does the job, so, so I'm satisfied. Then lastly, of course, um, if you're walking around as a clown, you're gonna be wearing this all night. If you're gonna be wearing this all night, you really don't want to have to hold it uh, because it makes it even harder to open it as well. So I got these uh, from my grandmother. My grandmother still had them laying around. So also these little things I got really cheaply uh, for free, which is really cheaply. But, but I think you can get them uh, really cheaply as well. And if you don't get anything like this, you could even uh, look for an old backpack you have laying around and get the things you have in the backpack and put them on here. Anyway, I put these on here so you could just wear it like a backpack really comfortably. However, if I am wearing it all night, like during a haunted house or anything, I usually come to get of the bottom parts off, if I can manage right now. Yeah, I usually tend to get off these bottom parts and put like the top right to the bottom left and the top left to the bottom right. So I usually ask somebody to assist me with this and then I have a little like a cross over my back, uh, which I found makes it sit even even more easily and like solid on your back. But that's just a personal preference, I guess. So yeah, that's, um, well, a quick 17, 18 minute tour of the crate uh, and how I kind of build it. Uh, I didn't really have the exact plan up front before I started construction it, the, the, the crate, sorry. Um, no, I didn't really have a plan. I had, a, I had an idea in mind and I kind of, figured out all the different steps on the way. And this I found at the dollar store, even after I already finished it, I used it a couple times and then I figured, hey, might as well put it on there. So that, that that's a quick tour, I think. I think it's um, followable. I think you can uh, copy it if you want. If you want uh, more details, if, if you would like, like me to write down exactly uh, what materials I needed, what they cost, where I got them from, uh, like maybe the different steps. Um, you could let me know in the comments and I'll write it down for you. Uh, if you can manage with this video, that would be really cool. And I'm uh, mostly really, really curious to see your own creations, of course. So uh, if you do copy the system, please let me know, send me a picture or let me know in the comments with a link or anything, because uh, I would really appreciate it. Uh, lastly, one detail maybe that I haven't mentioned yet is that the crate itself is uh, 50 by 50 by 50 centimeters. So that's just for a reference. Uh, it's 50 by 50 by 50. Um, and also this I really didn't calculate. It was more of a free guess which turned out all right. So yeah, uh, good luck with your project and thanks for watching.